Hey everybody, it's Andy from EX2 Adventures. Happy New Year. Hope everybody's having a great day. Thank you so much for participating in the Backyard Burr virtual challenge. Let's see, today is January 5th, so it's the fifth day of the challenge. And today I wanna to show you uh, some helpful hints on how to submit results and run sign up, uh, how to check your team results. Uh, I just posted to some, some new facts, so I wanna show you what those are on the website and a couple of little tips and tricks. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. And, uh, Pull open uh, run sign up. So this is the main run sign up registration page. The navigation bar is across the top. Um, first thing I want to point out to you is where the facts are. So I've had a bunch of questions about like, you know, how do I submit results? Um, what happens if I need to change something that I already submitted? How do I do that? Um, I can't find myself in the participant list. Um, uh, what if I run more than my challenge distance? What do I do? And I uh, try to address all those in the latest round of facts on the run sign up page. So if you have any questions, uh, go here first. And then if these don't answer your question, feel free to give me a call or send me a text or shoot me an email and I'll make sure I get those questions answered for you. All right. Uh, next, I want to show you a couple of common things. Uh, so first, I want to show you how do you enter results. And there's a couple of different ways to get to this screen. So I am I am not logged in to run sign up right now. Uh, so if I wanted to go in and put in my results, uh, or log an activity, I go to the results tab, and then I click submit virtual results. And it's going to ask for well, who do you want to submit them for. So I'll just type in my name, and look up registration. And it's going to say, Okay, this is me. And then this button here says log activities. So I hit log activities. And I'm going to verify by the last four my phone number. And it lets me in because run sign up knows the phone number that I used or that I put in when I registered. So that it has that quick check, which makes it super easy. Uh, I haven't run today yet, but I'll just say I want to put in like a five mile run. So you put in the date the activity was completed. Uh, if you are like submitting activities for like the last couple of days, you can just put in previous dates and it's fine. Uh, so I'll just say I ran 5.02 miles. Uh, I'll say it took me 50 minutes and say 25 seconds. And the elevation gain was say 450 feet. Um, and then I can put in the comments. So this is where I want you to type in the word outside if you run outside or do activities outside. And then you could also put in like, um, you know, ran through the woods to granny's house. Right. Uh, whatever makes sense for you. you people have been putting in like uh, common runs they do, uh, whether they walked, whether they ran. Uh, whether they were hiking somewhere. So really it's a field for you. Uh, but if you want credit for like the 31 outdoor activities, just make sure you put in the word outside there. Uh, and then you hit uh, submit. That's all there is to it. So that's how you submit uh, an event. Um, I want to give you an idea of a couple of buttons here that show up. So there's add an, another activity, submit your photos or back to results. I'm going to click back to results here for a second. Um, so when I click back to results, it's going to show me my personal results um, that I put in so far. And so you can see this first one here is the last one I put in. And then these are my previous entries. So say, for example, I messed up and I don't, you know, I wasn't five miles and it actually was like six miles or something. How do I go in and change that? Um, so the easiest way to do it um, is you can click back that log activities and see this little button here says manage activities all the way at the bottom, click manage activities. And then it'll show you every single entry that you already put in. So if I, for example, want to change this from five miles to six miles, I click the little edit button over here and I go in and change it. And now I say it's 6.02 miles instead. And then I submit the activity. Uh, and that's all there is to it. So that's how you change something. A uh, couple other things that are kind of cool. So I've been adding photos um, every time I run. So my goal at the end of this is to run every single day in the month of January. So I'm going to plan to have 31 photos of myself every single day, which I think is kind of cool. Um, the way you add photos. Um, so um, the trick here um, is to view them, but to add a photo, you actually have to be logged in. Uh, so I'm going to go to, I'm going to sign in and reverse who I am. So I'm signing in. When I sign in, and look under photos. Um, this is like everybody's pictures. This is my pictures. And so you click on your name and one of the options is gonna be to upload images. Um, you can do it from your computer. It's super easy to do it from your cell phone, which is what I've been doing. It just looks in like your photo album, you upload a picture and, and that's that. Um, so I wanna show you 
The photos things is here. Again, I'm using it because I'm going to take a picture every day of myself and because I just think it's kind of fun. Uh, you can post pictures of where you run, whatever. Um, it's kind of fun, but you can use it however you, however you see fit. All right, uh, let's see. Um, I want to show you about sort of aggregate results and how you look at them. So uh, I'm still logged in, but it, it doesn't necessarily matter if I'm logged in or not to look at results. A um, couple of things to know first is that the results are organized by event. And in run sign up events for this particular challenge are the challenge distances. So 25 mile, 50 mile, 100 mile, 150 mile. So right now I'm only looking at the results so far for the 25 mile challenge. And so you can kind of see everybody listed here. Uh, if I were to search, you know, I'm just going to pick somebody like Holly. If I type in the name Holly, it'll search for it and then give me all of the Holly. So the smart thing, the search bar is pretty smart. If I click on a person's name, it'll bring me into their result details. So I can look at pictures, I can look at individual activities that the person ran. Um, that's there if you wanted to. Okay, and then if I want to look at say like my results, 150 miles, so I'm running the 150 mile challenge. I'll search for Andy and there I am, Andy Bacon. I click on me and here are my pictures. And then these are all my activities. Now notice I'm still logged in so I can edit these things if I want to. And since I didn't run today, I'm just going to go ahead and, and delete that activity. And now it's gone. So that's all there is to do for that. All right, team results. So a couple of things about the team results. Um, so we go back on results, and then instead of individual results, click on team results. These results are also organized by challenge distance. So you can see there's a little drop down here, and you select which event, which challenge distance you want to look at. Now, a lot of teams have participants that are spanning like a 25 mile, like some are doing the 25 mile, or some are doing the 50, some are doing 100, whatever. These results on this screen are only organized by a single event distance. So it'll look at, for example, everybody on Frozen Buns who are signed up for the 25 mile challenge. So Frozen Buns has like 100 gazillion people on it. But in this particular screen, it's only showing the 33 people that are signed up for the 25 mile challenge. Does that make sense? So make sure. When you look at this, you're not like, well, hey, where's everybody for frozen buns? Uh, I'm going to show you how to see everybody uh, next. So that's how you look at the team results. Hope that's clear. And it tells you time and miles and elevation gain. OK, say I want to show everybody on frozen buns as an example for that team. So I go to groups and teams. It, there's a search bar here. So I'm going to type in frozen. And here are frozen buns. Um, and I'm going to search, and there they are. And then you click on the link. So Frozen Buns, 139 people. I'm going to click on their uh, link. And now it tells me, OK, it shows me a couple of things. One is, in total, they've run 1,891 miles with a total elevation gain of over 80,000 feet. They have people running at every single distance. Um, so in this number right here, is the place they are in those individual standings. So they're in first place in every single category. Um, and then it shows you all the team members. So here's all the team members listed and the miles that they've run. Uh, if you were to click on one of their entries, for example, it would bring you into the details of what of those persons, of that person's activities. Hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, let me see. Donate, donate. Thanks to everybody who donated to Homestretch. Uh, $11,659. We absolutely blew our fundraising goal out of the water, which was amazing. Um, EX2 adds 10% to every single person's donation. So uh, at the end of the challenge, I'm going to write them a big check for well over $12,500, which they are going to be actually thrilled about. Um, I encourage you to read about Homestretch. It's a great nonprofit based um, in Northern Virginia, where, where I am, uh, in Falls Church, Virginia. It's a great, uh, they have a great set of programs. So thank you again to everybody who donated. Um, you're really making a difference. Let's see. Um, I think that's all I want to show you. Um, oh, the other thing, to other one more note on their individual results. So back on results, if you are looking, it's like Elizabeth, for example, um, you notice the clock time, distance in miles, the progress. Progress is obvious. That's just how many miles in comparison to her challenge goal was. Uh, elevation gain, pace. So 
what the system does behind the scenes is it aggregates every single time you add an activity. If you put in um, a distance, an elevation gain, and the total time that you ran every single time, it'll calculate accurately your total distance and your average pace across all your activities. If, for example, though, but you leave out a pace sometimes, for example, or your, your time, or you leave out your elevation, it's, it's gonna throw off those calculations. So it's, it's, not, it's largely an all or nothing. So if you wanna have like your total elevation, your total time, your total average pace across all your activities, make sure you put it in for every single run that you enter into the system. Um, again, so at the end of the 31 days, you'll have this cool like set of statistics. All right. Um, let me give one more plug to entering in, um, you know, activities and one kind of cool thing that you can do with it. So I'm personally big on sort of visualizing things. And one thing that's kind of cool at the end of this is that you'll be able to see all your activities across the month. So uh, just to give you an example, again, sort of looking on my record, uh, you know, so here's when I'm done at the end of the month, I'm going to have 31 pictures of me every single day, which again, I think is just kind of cool. And then I'm going to have a list of every single activity that I did in the month. So I'm you know, primarily focused on running. I'm just going to enter in my, my running activities in here, but I'm going to look at them all in one place and say, hey, I did all these different events. Um, here's a description, a little short description of what I did every single day. Again, it just kind of gives you that great sense of like, wow, I actually did something really cool uh, at the end of the challenge. So I encourage you, you know, if you want to put in more information about kind of what you're doing every day, it'll be really cool at the end uh, when you get to sort of reflect on the challenge and the month and all the great things that you accomplished. So uh, I think that's all I want to show you for today. Uh, I will make a plug for everyone if you're on Facebook uh, to join our EX2 Racers and Volunteers Facebook page. Uh, people have been posting all sorts of pictures and it's great to see what people are doing and, and getting encouragement from other participants. That is uh, wonderful. Uh, so if that's your thing and you're on Facebook, go for it. We'd love to, we'd love to have you on there. Uh, and if not, you, know, you can submit pictures via run sign up and you know, you'll, you'll have them uh, uh, for a nice sort of collection at the end. So I want to thank everybody again for participating in the Backyard Brewer Virtual Challenge. Uh, this is the biggest EX2 event ever. Uh, thank you so much for participating. Um, keep on running and uh, keep on being good to each other. And uh, we'll see you soon. Take good care.